Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Virtual Chapel, I guess. This is something weird, new, interesting for all of us. But uh, this is kind of your introductory, so hi. Um, I just want to say welcome. I'm glad you're here if you are watching it. Um, and Miss Duncan kind of reached out to me the other day. She was like, hey Matt, I want you to share a couple of Bible verses, maybe some wisdom, some words of encouragement for our students as we go throughout this time. And I prayed about it and I was really thinking, and the first thing that came to my mind was, Psalms 23, Psalms 23, Psalms 23, Psalms 23. God was just like, this is what I want you to speak on. Um, and I, it, it sounds kind of cliche, and it's it's one of those verses that everybody knows, everybody's heard before, they've heard it in Bible classes. But it's, it's really something we skip over, and it's really important. So I'm going to go through verses 4, 5, and 6. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall come, follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, as we go throughout these seasons in life, as we go throughout uh, struggles and questions and addictions and and fears as we go throughout anxiety and depression and everything that we go through you know we shouldn't be worried we shouldn't be fearful we shouldn't be questioning because we know that god will always be with me i will fear no evil for thou art with me and that doesn't mean he's with me right now or he's with me sometimes or you know sometimes i feel god sometimes i don't like he is with us constantly for eternity you know he's always here and i think it's really really cool to think about like this is the only god that is always here for us the only religion or belief because it's real where we can just reach out to god at any time and he will be here for us constantly and it, i think it's just one of the coolest things to understand that god is here we can reach out to him with anything questions struggles anxieties fears things that we don't even understand how do i deal with this god you can lift it up to him and he will give you guidance and he will lead you you know it, it says thy rod and thy staff they comfort me but earlier it it says the lord is my shepherd the shepherd's goal is to guide the sheep where they're supposed to go you know god is going to guide us in life where we need to be and i just i think that's the coolest thing to understand that god is always here for us we shouldn't fear anything in life and to understand that he's going to guide us everything that's happening is part of god's plan and it's for a reason so just remember that as you go throughout you know the next years of your life and, and forever just knowing that God is constantly here. He's constantly for us. He's constantly protecting us and guiding us and leading us. And just understand that, you know, we shouldn't fear anything when we can just give it all to God. So I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying for the school and, and for the future students and everything that's going on right now. And I, I just hope you all are doing well. And the school's praying for you. Everyone loves you guys. Everyone loves, you know, everyone together. This is a community. This is a family. So just praying for you guys. If you ever need anything, feel free to reach out to anyone. You guys, I hope y'all are doing well. Currently, right now, I'm here with our band at our church, and Miss Duncan has given me the opportunity to be able to worship with you guys virtually. So, as I sing this song, just enjoy it and just worship our God.
Hello there, Sefner Christian students. We're going to take part in our second day here in the school revival. As I said yesterday, first of all, I appreciate anyone that was willing to tune in, and I know that maybe it can be a distraction for just a few minutes. This, this, this uh, time we're living in is kind of crazy, and I know that a lot of you uh, uh, have some disappointing things that just took place. Uh, you're not going to be able to have your graduation in the normal way and maybe take part in some of the, the, the school-ending you know, events and things, but you know... Uh, I really believe that this is a time that each one of us as Christians and non-Christians alike should, should take the time to, to maybe reflect on our own lives. And I, I think it's an opportunity that if we'll take advantage of, may, maybe actually uh, we can look back on it and say that it was a blessing and that some things uh, kind of re, re-centered themselves in our lives. Yesterday we talked about uh, letting the world know and letting our flesh know and letting Satan know where we stand in, 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 the, in our faith and in our Christianity And today I want to speak to you about a a different subject, but I think in the time we're living in, it's a very important subject. Uh, This morning, if I could title my message, it it would be this, Redeem the Time. Redeem the Time. And the Bible says this in in the book of James, chapter 4, and verse 14. It says, Whereas ye know not uh, what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanishes away. Now, young people, one of, if not the most successful lie that Satan has pushed throughout all of time is that you and I have plenty of time to get things right. He says there's plenty of time to reconcile with that friend that you've hurt. There's plenty of time to earn back the respect of your peers. Uh, You've got all the time in the world to maybe mend that tattered relationship with your parents or with your loved ones. And most of all, more than any of those, this is what we'll find him most often whispering in our ear. He'll say there's more than enough time to connect or maybe reconnect with God. Now after all, you're young. I mean, you have so many things to concentrate on, to focus on as you transition from your teenage years into adulthood. Now God will be there when the time is right. Now some of you, I can imagine, have already rolled your eyes at this point. Maybe you've, the thought has crossed your mind. I've, I've heard this same sort of thing a million times. And, and I understand that. I know when I was your age, that would have been my exact reaction. It would have been to say, yeah, I've heard it all before. I've heard how that time flies. I've heard how that uh, time goes quicker than we think. I can remember in my own life, my mom and dad and my grandparents and different uh, older folks within the church, they would say to me, you're not going to believe how fast time goes by. And I used to think, are you kidding me? I'm having the time of my life. I mean, it seems like I've got all this time to enjoy myself with my friends. And, but I can tell you now, being the father of three girls, one of which just recently got engaged to be married, I can tell you that they were right all along. Time goes so much faster than you could possibly imagine uh, Billy Graham once said that that's the hardest thing that he ever tried to convince kids of or, or, or young people of is that time goes by so much faster than you would ever believe. Uh, Billy Graham said this as well. And I want you to think about what he said here because I think it's very pertinent to the message. He says, Each day the bank named Time opens a new account for you and me. But unlike other banks, it does not allow us to carry our balances over to the next day. There's no overdraft protection, so to speak. If we fail to use each day's deposit of time, we lose it forever. The Bible says, redeem the time because the days are evil. And surely you would agree with me this morning that the days we're living in are certainly evil. I can't begin to tell you how much I regret or how many regrets I've had for having failed miserably to redeem my time in my teenage years serving the Lord. I myself have have known all my life what it is to be a Christian. I grew up right here in this church. Uh, My mom started bringing me from the the day I was able to come up until now. I've never missed a Sunday night or Wednesday night or or Wednesday night if I I can possibly help it. I, I faithfully attended this church, but if I'm honest with you this morning, throughout my teenage years, although I knew I had the knowledge of salvation and what Jesus had done for me, if I'm honest with you this morning, I didn't live my life that way. I didn't live my life with with thanksgiving for what He had done. I just kind of put that on the back burner and did what I thought was best in my own eyes. In other words, I'm saying this, I did not redeem my time. And the time went by faster than I ever could have imagined and I wish so much that I could get back some of those years that I could have spent influencing my friends for the cause of Christ. Again, yesterday I challenged you guys 
That, that you need to let some things be known in your life. Let the world know. Let your flesh know. Let Satan know what you're willing to do for Christ or that you're going to take a stand for Christ. But this morning, I want to challenge you with a few other things. I want to challenge you on how you redeem your time. Now, first of all, I want to challenge you to redeem your time pursuing God. The Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. It says, For I determine not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now I wonder this morning, uh, today, what it is that you find yourself pursuing. I know that many of you here at SCA have been blessed with incredible athletic ability. It seems uh, that the students here are in the local headlines almost weekly. Colleges from all over the country uh, come and they scout you out and they try to entice you uh, to further your athletic uh, careers at their institutes. I know I've been told of students uh, who are academically excelling. I- I've heard of uh, the testing averages and the, and the test scores being off the charts and, and as such and as a result the scholarships have come pouring in. And then still others I've seen with my own eyes or I've Heard with my own ears the the musical talent that you have, the vocal talent, the acting skills that you take part in the dramas that are are led each year and in the different choir performances and the musicals. I've heard them with my own eyes or I've heard them with my own ears and seen with my own eyes how talented some of you guys are. And and all those things are deserving of applause. Uh, They are tremendous gifts that will open doors in your life without a doubt. But if you're not careful, young person, those very gifts that come directly from the God who formed you, will drive a wedge between you and Him. If we're not careful, the very things that He's given us, the very talents that He's given us, the things that we enjoy most of all, can, we can turn those things to a certain point where they're driving a wedge between our very Creator and, and ourselves. Now, I'm not trying to be overdramatic this morning, but, but can I caution you for a moment that one day, sooner than you might think, You're going to stand before a holy God. And if I'm honest, although I do have a basic knowledge of what's going to take place on that day, I can't say for sure what questions God will or will not ask of you. I don't know 100% how that's going to go down, but I can tell you a few things I'm certain He will not ask. He's not going to ask you how many touchdowns you scored or how many home runs you hit. He won't ask you for your GPA or, or, how, or how fast you were able to climb the corporate ladder. He's not going to ask you how many people attended your last concert or your last performance. The, the importance that we've placed on these things in that moment will seem so insignificant. So young people, if my prediction is right, I believe that his question may sound something like this. What did you believe about my son? How much time did you spend telling others of the good news of the gospel of Christ? How many widows did you help throughout your life? How many hungry mouths did you help feed? How many people did you tell the great message of salvation? How many friends did you try to win so that they could spend eternity in heaven? Now, I'm not saying that those things that you're pursuing are wrong. Certainly, I'm not. But what I am saying is this. Redeem your time for Christ. Use your athletics to honor Christ. Use your education to teach others about the good news of the gospel. Sing about and use your talents for Jesus Christ so that you can receive a reward in heaven. So first of all, this morning, my challenge for you is this. Redeem your time pursuing God. And then secondly, I think you should redeem your time praising the Lord. Now in this day that we're living in as never before, our attention is being pulled in every direction. It seems that through the power of social media and through the internet, our time and attention is being divided in so many competing interests. No matter what your hobbies are, no matter what your interests are this morning, you can absorb information about those things or be entertained by those things with just the click of a button. And I'm as guilty as anyone of allowing my focus, my attention, even my praise to be tied to any number of things that media has to offer. There's an old song that says this, It says, standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. And I know what that song is supposed to mean. I know what it's trying to say. It's trying to say that when we find ourselves in the toughest circumstances, when we find ourselves going through the trials of life, that Jesus is always faithful to be found there. But I'm afraid in our own lives, sometimes the truth is, Jesus is standing in the shadows because we've asked Him to stand there. Sometimes I think He's over in the shadows because that's exactly where we want Him to be. In our mind, we think, Jesus, 
I do love you. I, I really do. And, and, but right now I'm with my friends. Right now I'm trying to obtain all the followers I can. Jesus, could you please just, just for now, would you just stay away? I'll make time for you later, I promise. And as silly as that might sound, I'll guarantee you, there's some of you that are listening as, as well as I, that from time to time have treated God this way. But God help us if we treat the very one who hung between heaven and earth in utter agony with that kind of irreverence. Maybe it's time we apologize and ask for some forgiveness. Maybe it's time we ask Him to step out of those shadows and become prominent in our lives. I'm challenging you this morning. I'm challenging you this morning to redeem your time praising the one who's worthy of your attention, the one who's worthy of your praise. Now, we're going to regret so many things at life's end. And I, I promise you that's going to be the case. But you'll never regret a single time you spent praising the Lord. You'll never regret a single second of praising and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. So I challenge you first of all this morning to redeem your time by, by praising the Lord, by pursuing the Lord, and then secondly, by just praising Him and worshiping Him in every scenario you possibly can. But then thirdly and lastly this morning, I challenge you to redeem your time by promoting Him. Now I don't think it's lost on you guys that, that the way that businesses and brands in our day uh, obtain such massive amounts of revenue is by marketing their businesses. They promote their businesses through social media, through TV commercials. Uh, there's all sorts of marketing materials and marketing strategies that these companies employ. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to get what's called ROI. They're trying to get a return on their investment. In other words, they, they spend countless amounts of money and, and massive amounts of money trying to promote their product through social media or TV so that you'll go out and spend even more money trying to obtain those products. That's called return on investment. In fact, it, it, that's something we do with every decision we make in life. Ultimately, every decision we make, we're trying to, to look towards the future and see that we'll get some sort of benefit or some sort of return on the investment that we're putting into a particular area of our life. But Paul said, I, I desire fruit that it may abound to your account. In other words, Paul was saying this, you want to know what's important in your life? What's important in your life is to promote Jesus Christ so that you can have fruit that abounds to your account. Now, what does he mean by that? I'll tell you what he means. He means exactly what we talked about a few moments ago, that someday in our life, sooner than we might think, we're going to stand before God. And, and some of us may have nothing to offer Him because we've spent all of our time trying to redeem things that don't matter. We've redeemed our time with earthly goods and earthly treasures instead of uh, getting that fruit that the Bible talks about that can abound to our account. But I don't know about you, but after all the things that the Lord has done for me in my life, I want to have a basket full of fruit to give Him. I want Him to be able to look at my life and say there's the fruit of worship. There's the fruit of testimony. There's the fruit of, of going out and winning people for Christ. There's the fruit of labor. There's the fruit of promoting my Son. So my, my, my question to you is this. What sort of ROI are you going to receive at the end of your life? Is it all going to be material? Because the materials are going to die with you. They're not going to go to heaven. But I thought, what, what, a, what a better business strategy? What, what greater business strategy could we have than to promote Jesus Christ? First of all, those products that we try to sell in the world, those cost money. We have to sell them for a cost. But Jesus has given us a, a, a gift or a good that we can go out and we can promote it. But here's the great thing about it. We can give it away for free. We can give it away for free and the return on investment is so much greater. You say, what's the return on investment? I'll tell you what it is. It's forgiveness of sin. It's an eternity with a loving Father who loves you and cares for you. It's all of eternity being able to be with our friends and loved ones. So there is a much greater return on investment for having redeemed our time for Christ. So this morning, again, I want to challenge you. Redeem your time by praising the Lord. Redeem your time by promoting Him. Redeem your time by pursuing Him. There's no greater ROI than those things. And, and as I said yesterday, you, you might think, why? Why should I do this? Well, I thought Jesus had just a short time on this earth. Jesus fulfilled the Scripture 
That life is just a vapor. If you know about the life of Jesus, He was only given 33 years to walk on this earth. But did He redeem His time? Yes, certainly He did. But He did it for you and I. He didn't do it to to gain things for Himself. He did it so that all the ones He loved could be with Him for all of eternity. So He set an example of redeeming His time. He went about this earth doing good and healing people and winning them and preaching to them and getting them to understand that there's there's a war going on, a spiritual battle, and that we've got to choose sides. We've got to draw a line in the sand. So again this morning, my challenge for you is this. Will Will you concentrate? Will you pray about redeeming your time with the things that are important? Again, I know that some of you are so incredibly talented. And that is wonderful. I I challenge you to to, to continue to pursue those great talents and those great gifts. But not at the, the cost of turning away the very one that gave you those talents. If you're thankful for the gifts that God has given you, then redeem your time by pursuing Him and by praising Him and by promoting Him. So that ultimately we can get that wonderful ROI at the end of our life. The greatest return on investment there could ever be in eternity with our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's been a pleasure speaking to you guys again. I thank you that that you've tuned in. I, I know that God will honor young people who will take the time to listen to some old guy preach to them in an empty auditorium. It's awkward for me, and I know it's awkward for you, but I'm telling you, God will honor those who will take the time to make a choice to learn about Him, especially in this time where we have so much vacant time. We have uh, so much time at home and we've been quarantined in different things and thankfully some of those things are being lifted. But I promise you that God will honor you for, for taking these challenges, for, for diving into the Scriptures that we've talked about and ultimately for redeeming your time for the one cause that's worth redeeming it for and that is Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, again, I love you. I thank you, God, for these students. I thank you for these young people who've been so faithful to listen, Lord. I know that sometimes it's, it's, it's challenging, Lord, that, that they're being pulled in every direction, God. I know that they're, this is kind of the, the t- they're having the time of their life. It's the peak of their life when they can do so many wonderful things. I know that so many of them have been blessed with talent, God. But I just pray that you'd send the Holy Spirit into each and every one of their lives, Lord, to prick their hearts and to to help them to understand, to have the maturity to understand that time goes by so much faster than they'll ever imagine, God. So we need to be careful, Lord, to redeem our time in things that will will bring honor to your name, God, and that will lay treasures up in heaven for us. And I, I just pray, God, that somebody, somebody listening out there, Lord, some young man or young woman would take these challenges to heart and take them on in their life and redeem their time for your cause and for for salvation and for eternity, Lord. And I'll ask all these things and thank you for all these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen.